Hello lovelies and welcome to this week's video. So this week we're going to be talking about some simple ways that you can um, work with or worship um, Hecate, Lilith, and Aphrodite. I will post my videos of all three below which talks about their story as well as like some myths and misconceptions uh, about all of them. And then I want you to please disregard some of my choices with hair at that time. Anyway, so we, today we'll start with Hecate. Um, so first, pronouncing her name right is a very simple one. Um, I know when people just look at it, they might think Hecate or Hecate. Um, but the right way, there's two right ways, um, Hecate or Hecate, but there really isn't like a horrible way. It's just, those are the two ways that are more of an emphasis. Um, in ancient, it was still more Hecate, but they do put more emphasis on the K, Hecate. Um, another way is having an altar um, offerings. So for, I it might have, I spent so many years since I did my video on, on Hecate, Lilith, and Aphrodite. I don't recall exactly everything I've said. I typically tend to add like symbols and herbs and crystals that are good for each goddess. So I'm sure I've talked about some altar, um, aspects. Again, so many years ago, I don't go back and watch old videos myself. Um, but again, they are below. But uh, with Hecate, uh, you can use stuff like pomegranates and lavender, um, dates, um, eggs, breads, um, more sweet ones, or in the crescent moon or the triple goddess itself, or with the other, her other symbols. Um, what else is there? There's garlic. Um, honey, honey is the one that I tend to use when it comes to Hecate, but you know, there's many different things. Um, and then candles, um, candles and certain incenses, which I know I talked about these specific ones in the video. I do in all of them. I know which ones are for Lilith and Hecate and etc. but I'm trying to make this quick. You can also do a song, dance chanting, even making art of some form, anything that's dedicating to Hecate herself. Um, feasts, so you can create like a feast or a dinner party for Hecate to honor the goddess, the goddess of life and death. Um, in ancient times, Hecate's uh, priestesses held large parties in her name and made her favorite foods. And typically what can be combined in, again, is similar to what I just mentioned. Honey um, is like a big one again. Eggs, garlic, lavender. Even just having um, at night, the outside of the feast aspect, um, a lavender tea that you put a little bit of honey in. I know it might sound a little strange, because at least in America, because a lot of people put honey in like chamomile, but it's really good. Um, and then red wine and breads. Um, set a place with a goddess at the altar and celebrate on the 13th. Um, so 13th are, 13 is like a big number. But specific days can be August 13th, November 30th, um, which are t uh, days that are related to Hecate. Also, Mabon can also be used as a time for Hecate as well. Then you can also dedicate an altar, which again, in my other actual video on Hecate, you'll find out more for that, um, besides just the off altar offerings we talked about, um, having a broom, um, having different crystals that are related to her, which again can be found in my other video, a cauldron, a statue of her, keys, dog figures, stars, moons, specifically like the triple goddess, um, with any uh, crystals that you get, make sure that they're 
cleansed and charged on the dark moon every month. Um, you can also cleanse and concentrate, concent consecrate the space um, and use tools to put her name. Um, then you can also do dark moon rituals going off of what I was just saying with putting any crystals or any like crescents, moon shaped objects that are on your altar to Hecate out on the, during the dark moon. Um, there are rituals that you can also do. So um, using the dark moon instead of, you know, some people just do full moon or they do new moon and full moon, but they don't do the whole cycle. This would be a good reason why you should is if you follow Hecate. So you can do healing, banishing, cleansing rituals um, in Hecate's name, calling upon the goddess during the dark moon to make them stronger and more potent. Um, make sure you're speaking to her as well as giving offerings. So going back to the offerings. So maybe some lavender, some honey, even having red wine during your ritual. Um, if you do a circle, for example. Um, so looking for, so you can find any dark moon ritual, create any dark moon ritual and that has to do with healing, banishing, and cleansing, and still add Hecate and call upon Hecate and her energy, and it will just make it much stronger. Um, you can do offerings by the door. Way back uh, in ancient times, um, her devotees would leave offerings um, to her and the, their pet dogs outside of their door. And you can do the same to honor her today or you can just leave it outside of your home um, instead of a neighbor or um, somebody else who you know has a dog. You don't necessarily need to have a dog. So you leave it out for Hecate and her dogs and you can remove it in the morning and then bury whatever is left out into um, the ground or if it can and it's small enough into plants or you can compost. Um, uh, uh, and then there's spirit work in the cemetery. So using divination is another one of hers. So you can kind of mix these two together. You're going into the cemetery, the crossroads and um, doing divination. Um, menstrual magic. So knowing where your cycle aligns with the moon and um, honoring Hecate at the start of every period. Um, and then as well as when pregnant. So representing the, all the different times in a woman's life. So there are different spells and stuff with menstrual magic to make more potent, you make your magic more potent during certain times. You can call upon Hecka teacher in that time. Um, and I, like I mentioned, doing things in 13s. Um, so, you know, this can be done in so many different ways. 13 menstrual cycles. Um, you know, we have th you, that you can do something. Um, it's just making sure 13. So like, for example, for me, when I'm doing a spell, I tend to repeat in threes. And, but if you're using Hecate, it might be better to use 13. Um, and then you can make teas or um, a loose herbal incense with um, honey, lavender, peppermint, and black tea. If you do want it to be a tea to honor Hecate, just add some water, um, hot water, obviously. And then next is Lilith. So Lilith is my main goddess that I work with. Hecate is my number, my second, um, which it does in all my research too, um, just in all my studies, to work with goddesses that have similarities. But you don't always, obviously it's different. I talked about this in a video a while back where you know there's different archetypes within us, but if you're working on a certain type of magic for a certain period of time, it's best to work with goddesses that have some crossover, some similarities, or are in the same kind of realm of type of goddess, etc. So with Lilith, you might want to read about her first because there's so many different stories, so many different myths, so many different, like, mis mis misinformation about her. I hate that word, but, like, when you look at the Sumerian 
talk of her versus the Judeo-Christian. Um, it's come so different. She really is a goddess of the women and of um, children even, which goes completely against everything that the Judeo-Christians say. So you can also set up an altar, which I really do a talk a bit about in the video about Lilith. And I remember that just because Lilith is my um, matron goddess. So like black obsidian, turquoise, um, those are really good, and smoky quartz, um, frankincense, myrrh, things like that. Um, wearing jewelry or having symbols related to um, Lilith at all times, wearing them is a great thing to do, but also putting it on your altar. Like I'm wearing turquoise right now, but, and I have a little symbol tattooed on me and with inside of an owl, but you can put some on your altar. Um, you know, you can get favorite colors to call upon her, which are typically black and red. But you can also incorporate white for the balance. Um, candles and incense, so I listed some of her scents, which herbs, which are like myrrh and frankincense. There's more as well. Um, another is, um, why can't I think of it? Ber uh, bergamot and then moss. So you can add that into offering bowls, mirrors and plants. So like, I have a lot of plants in my house. It's just uh, ironically not in the space that I was being filmed. Um, plants, I, I, I put flowers on my, my Lilith altar. My main altar is Lilith. Um, she loves mirrors. Um, be sure to include her name and or a symbol. I have a Lilith candle, like altar candle, and then I use, I have owls, I have snake skin, um, not off the snake, but you know, the dried that falls off. Um, ham, the hamsa, or just hands in general, stars, um, decor, snakes, things like that. Um, you can do, um, air element magic. So you'd be working with the air elements and that would be having to use a lot of burning of incense, smoke and clouds, scrying, storm magic, um, working with their wild energy. So more chaotic, but you can still do herbal magic. So that's the positive of Lilith too, is that it's air magic and then you can also use earth magic. So a lot of herbs, a lot of maybe hedge witchery even, not just green witchery, but um, cooking with the herbs that you have harvested. Um, and like I said before, plants are really big. Um, symbols, like I said, wearing, um, I, I have it tattooed. Um, I talk a lot about it in my video on Lilith. Um, other things that you can do are sex magic, um, do dark moon spells. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about sex magic when it gets Aphrodite, but and I talked a little bit about dark moon magic already with Hecate. So Lilith, the reason I put her in the middle is because she's kind of that in between because she can be utilized for empowerment, sexuality, um, fertility even, protection, numerous things that can be kind of a crossover between Hecate and Aphrodite. So then with Aphrodite, again, you might want to research and study. So again, there's so many different stories out there about Aphrodite, you know, there's fiction and then there's the myth, actual mythos and all of that. Um, so you're gonna really want to research that. And then um, having an altar space. So reds, whites, golds, pink, yellow, um, white, red, pink candles, um, incense um, that has like rose or jasmine, um, a cup or a chalice preferably filled with red wine or fresh water, pure water. Um, also perfume and jewelry, having it very clean with fresh flowers and just very fresh. So if it, uh, the flowers start to die or the plant starts to die, it must be removed. You don't wanna put dried, too much dried stuff on. So unless you're putting like dried roses on there as like an offering or as part of your altar, if you had fresh flowers there, remove them from the Aphrodite altar before they start dying. 
honor her sacred days. So just like Hecate, there are certain days. So Aphrodisia is the ancient festival of Aphrodite that was celebrated on Cyprus. And it, it includes offerings of flowers and incense and um, a beautiful evening, okay? Her, her image would be paraded around and worshiped by people. It's celebrated between the third and fourth week of July and sometimes into August or on the midsummer. You can also honor her on Fridays um, and the fourth of each month and on February 14th, the Feast of Eros or Eros and on the new or dark moon. So the two latter were both dark moons, but she can be worshiped on both the new or the dark moon, not the full, but the new. So when you're setting your intentions or during the dark moon, um, sex magic. So I mentioned that with Lilith very quickly. Um, so Aphrodite is the obvious goddess of passion and love. She can be invoked as can Lilith, going back to the Lilith part and casting sex magic, same with the Lilith. Um, this can be done uh, on an individual with, your partner or somebody else or with yourself you don't have to have actual sex with sex magic um and i know most people know that but some beginners might not or people that never utilize sex magic um call upon her invoke her ask for her assistance the same with lilith which is why i said i'll just touch on it here and um either will gladly assist you in the bedroom i guess it depends on what you're trying to get um you can also, um, if you're doing by yourself, um, call upon her to help push or um, increase um, existing um, enchantment or desire. People might have lust, um, infatuation, love that may be blooming, existing love that might be struggling, things like that. And you can also do that with the partner themselves if they're willing, of course. Um, and then divination with her as well. So another way to like connect to her. Now with all three, there are obviously so many other ways. These are just a quick few options. Um, like with Lilith, I tend to invoke her um, during the full moon and the dark moon. Um, and I have like my full altar just dedicated. And I do a lot of divination with her, with like tarot and things like that, and call upon her for the magic that I tend to do. Um, otherwise it's Hecate, and then latter is actually Aphrodite. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, because again, these are just some basic ideas. If you wanna know more about what you can put on your altar or things that you might be able to do, please check out the videos on each of the goddesses discussed in this video. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll see you next time. Bye.